So today, we're gonna, our lesson, my lesson is called Testing for Continuity. Just watch me. Test for Continuity. All right. But before I give you the rules, you're going to explore. Okay? You're going to discover. You're going to find out. You're going to tell what the rules are. Let's do this in red. See? Right. There we are. Okay. So with your functions, I'm going to call them f of x. The limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side for f of x is 1. The limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side for f of x is also no, is 2, and f of 2 is 0. With your functions, your graph, everything you have on the table, show me what this looks like. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, sorry. Two. Two. Wait. Oh, okay. I read it wrong. Wait, what's the same one? The side is zero. From the positive side is also zero. But f of three is three. Up or down, sideways, I don't care. Just a function. 
Now, my question for you is, is, why well, put Liz, is f of x continuous at x equals 3? No. Oh, it's not. I got a Cheerio right here. Do you see the Cheerio? Hey, Olivia. So, this is a Cheerio. This is a hole. If you want, just uh, graph. You have parker right there. And we're just learning continuity right now. Okay, so you have a chair right there. Now, when, it's set, when I say continuity, you need the function. If you're following the function, you don't have to pick up your pencil or your pen. So, let me ask you this. Does a limit exist? Yeah. What's a limit as x approaches 3? It's 0. The left-hand side tells you it's 0. The right-hand side tells you it's 0, so it's got to be 0. Zero, zero, zero. The limit exists. Got it. Is f of 3 defined? Yes. But is it continuous? No. All right. Clear it off. All right. Number three. Wait, this doesn't work. Hold on. 
No, wait, this is not. This should be right here. This is going to Oh. Oh. You've already seen it. You've already seen it. You know what? That's fair. All right, let's do this. So, sketching, you have your graph. Four, let's say four is right here. Four for the negative size, approaching negative two. Let's gonna make this negative two right here. For the positive size, approaching negative one. I'm gonna make that negative one. And g of four is negative one. So that's gonna be an M and M right here. And they can see what's at four. No. No. What's the first thing you notice? Does a limit exist? No. No. The limit does not exist. Remember, when the limit does not exist, you got one side of the function going up here or down here, and you got the other side going up here or down here. They don't meet. The limit does not exist. Is G of four defined? Yes. Yeah. But is it continuous at four? No. All right. Fair it off. Exist. 
Michael, say it a little bit louder, love. Like. You said it right. Well, yeah, someone else said it. He was kind of having fun with that word. He said it's all the same, meaning the limit's three and GF1 is three. It's all the same. All right. Okay, well, let's do three more, and then we're going to go over the uh, criteria points for continuity. Two more. I can't get everything in one shot. I got part in Okay, now we got to No, we have to do the next one. I don't have enough Twizzler things for this. I accidentally stole them. Oh, I don't have enough space on my desk for this. No problem. Oh, it's not long enough. Oh, it's a five, yeah. All right. Is this continuous at x equals five? No. What's the first thing you notice? There's a gap between the. There's a gap. I'll leave it it. The limit does not exist. You know immediately the limit design exists, they're going to come to two different y values. So therefore, no. Limit. No. Limit. As x approaches 5, does not exist. Okay? Is it g of x continues at x equal 5? No, the limit does not exist. Is g of 5 defined? Yeah, so I can't say it's not. The one design exists. Okay, one more. The limit as x approaches zero. So, let's make this. Four, four, four. Okay. Zero, four. Wait, what? Oh, okay. It's that, it's that. Oh, it's the same as before. Oh, you know, I do great. Like, so, limit is just like a general one. 
Is f of x continuous at x equals 0? No. Okay. First of all, a couple questions. Does a limit as x approaches 0 for f of x exist? Yes. All right. So you know you've got a line where the lines with y values meet. From left-hand side, right-hand side, they meet. Is f of 0 defined? No. No. f of 0, f of 0 is not defined. If I know that f of 0 is not defined, immediately it's not going to be continuous. All right. So... Like Michael said, if you look at this previous one. That was Francesca. Oh, Francesca. <laughs> what is the limit as x approaches 1 for this? 3. What is g of 1? 3. They're all the same. So there's three criteria points for continuity. What's the first thing that you notice if you're going to be tested for continuity at x equals c? Test, test, watch me, test for continuity. Continuity at x equals c for any function. All right, first thing you're going to be testing, guys, from the left-hand side, from the right-hand side, is what? Yeah. Does, is there a limit? Does the limit exist? First test is what? The limit for f of x as x approaches c, it has to exist. If it doesn't, it's not continuous. Your second test is the M and M. Is it defined? Second test is is f of c must also be defined. And so you can have a function where their limit exists, and there's an f of c, let's say the c is defined. Is that continuous? No. no. So what, what's the third step? If the limit at the point is the Yeah, then it's continuous. The third test, the limit as x approaches c for f of x must equal f of c. If they're the same, then it's continuous. All right, these are the three steps for continuity. Number one, does the limit exist? Next step, is it defined at c? And the third step, does the limit as x approaches c for f of x equal f of c? Are one and two the same answer? If they are, it's continuous. Now, when you're testing for functions, if the limit does not exist, you don't need you don't need to go number two or number three. Immediately you know it's not continuous. If the limit exists and it's not defined, you don't need to go number three. You just need to say f of c, f of four, f of five, whatever the x, whatever the x value is, is not defined. If one and two pass, then you go on to the third test. Does the limit as x approaches c for f of x equal f of c? If that is true, it's continuous. You have to go through these three steps, all right? If it doesn't pass number one, you don't have to do number two or number three. If it passes one and two, if it does not pass number two, you don't have to go number three. All right, we are done with this activity. Go ahead, I have a trash can over here, and I have a trash can over here. Go ahead and throw everything away. Get your nuts out. <laughs> Function right here. Let's call it g of x. Okay. 3x plus 1. 2x squared. It's greater than 1. And x is greater than or equal to 1. Is g of x continuous at x equals 1? Justify it. Show your work. Go ahead, Olivia. Oh,
the test for continuity. First of all, I have to check if the limit exists. Well, the limit for g of x, make sure the notation is perfect. You can't say the limit and have x going to one from the negative side without g of x, okay? The limit for x as, for g of x as x approaches one from the negative side is what? Four. The limit for g of x as x approaches 1 from the positive side is what? 2. two. So, does a limit as x approaches 1 for g, of x, for g of x, does it exist? No. Therefore, boom, 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 three little circles in a form of triangle, therefore, not continuous at x equals 1. Do those three dots make an end? Yes. The three dots? Yeah, but the dots don't show, so I make them longer. Wait, what did you say? Therefore. Yeah. The three dots, therefore. In math. Oh, it's therefore. Yeah. Go ahead for just a second. Three dots. They'll say justify your work. They are. <laughs> okay. So, do I need to go on to the second test? No. If the limit doesn't exist, it doesn't matter. The limit still exists, therefore not continuous at x equals y. Are we clear? Yes. All right. Next one. F of x. Take three, two, three. 2, 3, x squared plus 1. Let's make this um, x less than 0, x greater than 0. Let's make this is f of x continuous at x equals 0. Now, what are the, the, this right here, you can eyeball it, can't you? What's going on here? There's no equal to zero. Yes. So f of zero is not defined. Therefore, therefore f of x is not continuous at x equals zero. Oh, why is it a question mark? So I used to write question marks. The end question. <laughs> Sorry. Is f of x continuous at x equals zero? Well, the limit exists, but it's not defined. I mean, you can eyeball that. Is h of x continuous at x equals 1? Now, just a simple yes or no is not going to suffice. You're going to have to justify it. You're going to show that the limit exists. You're going to have to show that it's defined. And you're going to have to show that the limit is equal to f of 1 if it's continuous.
as h of x continues at x equals 1? Yeah. yeah. So, justify your work. It's going to say something along the lines of justify and explain. So it doesn't matter. The limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side for h of x is equal to 3. The limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side for f of x is also 3. f of 1 is 3. You guys know what the equal sign means. Fine. Alright, so then, because the limit as x approaches 1 for h of x is equal to f of 1, 3 is equal to 3, Therefore, continuous at x equals 1. Do you see how I justify that? I showed my work. It has to be exactly like that on my tasks, on my homework. So you have to show all your work. Show all of that. You're getting into the math courses where you have to prove everything. And just writing the answer yes will not suffice. You will get no credit for that. You have to justify it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Olivia. Oh, so we need to write that uh, f of 1 is the prime of the of Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the last step is you have to show, right, that the limit as x approaches 1 for h of x is, oh my god, sorry, I put f of 1, forgive me h of 1. I knew something was wrong. And that's another thing I do. If the equation, the function is written h, I want to get to write f. And you know what it means, and I know what it means, but you won't get credit for that. So you have to be mathematically, grammatically correct. Yes, love? Um, do we, like, if we prefer to write therefore, can we write that instead of the three dots? Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you see how this is looking like a little bit like an English paper? Okay, you have to write everything. Everything. Go ahead, love. So we use this abbreviation for something like Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll know what that means. All right. Here's the next one. Mm. Let's call this f of x.
So it's a bobo. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. I have a hole at 2. Let's graph. Well, actually, my water step. My water step is uh, 1 half. So I we know it goes this way. Over here, it goes this way. I'm looking at 2 right here. What is the limit as x approaches? Hold on, hold on. I have a hole. Hold on, I forgot, I forgot to do my hole. Where's the hole at? Two. Two. Right here. I have a hole right there. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side for f of x and the limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side for f of x. All right. Does the limit exist? Yeah, it does. If I substitute 2 in here, f of 2 into here, I get 1 over 2 plus 2. f of 2, even though it's a whole, according to this, is 1 fourth. This is 2 and 1 fourth. So I have this rational function with a Cheerio right now. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side is 1 fourth. The limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side is 1 fourth. What is f of 2? One fourth. The limit exists. F of two is defined. Your last step. The limit as x approaches two for f of x is equal to f of two. One fourth, one fourth, therefore continuous at x equals two. Go ahead, Olivia. Here's the whole at two. Yeah, what is f of two though? Oh, it's a coordinate love. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Now I get it. Because we've got oh, a substitute material. That's an F. F is down there, the green. Yeah. Go ahead, Michael. So there's both a hole and a definite point. Eminent. 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 So you have a cheerio right now, and then what is f of 2 and 4? Some of you probably think that this is a line, y equals 1 fourth. Well, look at, look at this. It's only at x equals 2, so it makes 1 fourth. I'll only go to 2. Make it a coordinate. So this is a cheerio. But f of 2 is 1 fourth. So you have a Cheerio with an M on M on top. Do we understand that? Okay, I'm going to give you one more, and I think we'll call it a day. Come on now. Let's call this G of X. Um, okay.
Where you factor this out, this is what you get. Is there a vertical asymptote at 4? No. Oh, so you can just plug in. Just plug in. You're more than welcome to graph it, but you can just plug in. This is what this graph looks like. So, here's my graph. I have a vertical asymptote at negative 4. At 5. Bobo right here. Now I'll make this in black. Bobo right here. My y intercept is a 0 and a negative number. My x-intercept is 3. These two connect. This is 1. It's a cross. So there we are. Ellie chair. Okay. So we want to know, is it continuous at x equals 4? Where's 4? Right there. So you can just plug in. Go ahead, love. Because you have a negative answer here. So this is negative 3. Negative 5. And I have four. Oh, crap, that's positive. Hee <laughs> hee, just joking. Sorry, my fault. Let's raise that. Let's raise that. Okay, so, oh, okay. Ah, uh, three. It's my y axis. Okay, let's do the graph of red. So, it's positive, and I have three right there. I'm sorry. This is 3 right here, so they have to connect the cross. All right, did you guys get something like that? Okay, so your 4 is somewhere down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug in 4. So from the negative side, it's approaching the same answer. From the positive side, it's approaching the same answer. So therefore, the limit as x approaches 4 4 g of x is, I have no idea, I'm about to put it in, 4 minus 3, 4 minus 5 is negative 1, and 4 plus 4 is 8, so I have 1 over negative 8, so, did you get, did you get that? Okay, so limit as x approaches 4 for g of x is negative 1 to 8. What is g of 4? Negative one eight. So g of four, um, g of four, is equal to the limit as x approaches four for g of x. Negative one eight. Negative one eight. There, therefore, g of x is continuous at x equals four. Go ahead, Olivia. Um, so for uh, this kind of function, would we be able to tell just by looking at the, um, the equation, if it's not, like if it's not a piecewise, will the limit ever non-exist until they get a different point? Yeah. Okay. What happens if I asked you, is this continuous at x equals a to 4? You would know that's an so asymptote. asymptote. So if we find that it's on an asymptote and there's not like a second point, the, it's going to not be continuous? Okay. Okay, so some of these, I, th I know that some of you probably went straight to the graph thing, and I'm like, you know what, there's not a vertical asymptote, you can just plug in. Go ahead, Benjamin. So, um, I just want to, so, uh, you proved that uh, it is continuous at x equals 4 by giving, you know, its point at x equals 4, but could I prove by saying that there's not an asymptote there? No. Nope. I have to give, okay. I just want to. The lesson's <laughs> testing for continuity, and this is what math people have to do, mathematicians. They have to test it. Does the limit exist? Is it defined? And so forth. There's a process. If you ever want to get your PhD or want to prove a math theorem and want to test it for continuity, you're going to have to go through these three steps. Go ahead, Olivia. So if it were on an asymptote, would that be enough to prove it? To say that no. you never have to ever prove it because? Good question. I love your question. Olivia just asked, what happens if it's an asymptote? Well, let's say the same equation right here. I'm going to move it up here. Good question, Lydia. Let's say for the same equation, is g of x continuous at x equals, what was it, negative 4? Yes. Negative 4. All right. Say it again. Undefined. 
Oh, you're talking about on the x equals negative 4? Oh, yeah. Well, this is how you would prove it. Yeah. Well, the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the negative side for g of x is negative infinity. The limit as x approaches negative 4 for g of x is positive infinity. The limit as x approaches the arrow, negative 4 for g of x does not exist, therefore not continuous at x equals negative 4. I would go with the limits. Easiest thing. Okay, so look at the graph. For the negative side, what is the function approaching as it goes to negative 4? You look at the y values. What is approaching from the positive side? Positive rates. Look at the y values. Now, f of um, 4, that would be, well, that's an algebra if you had to find something. You would say it does not exist, so therefore not continuous. But I usually like to go with the limits. You cannot say it's an asymptote. That's not, that answer will not suffice. All right, so I am done with my today's lesson. Your homework is...